Hi everyone, Shirtlight here, and as far as the smaller handheld G Generation games go, G Generation Advance definitely takes after Gator Beat and the later Mono Eye Gundams, especially with the part upgrade system. Definitely feels more standardized than the old Gator Beat from 99, that's for sure. Regardless, we're here to take a look at the stuff you can get via the parts combinations, since I conveniently kept the safe state of my old G Gen Advance save before starting a new game plus in order to get the GM Juggler and catch up on the unlocks I failed to get on my first run. I E is X-Murkies, the TV version, I have the Endless Waltz one, Master Asia and his Kowloon Gundam, and lastly Chi Magarahau. Regardless, I had sorted these by the parts used, which is definitely gonna streamline things. If you're here from GGN, DS, Cross Drive or Mono Eye Gundams, maybe even Gator Beats too, you'll definitely see a bunch of familiar ones. Let's begin then. One of the first parts you can get your hands on are the custom parts, having the highest amount of part combinations out of all the parts in the game, by which I mean 8. These can turn a Zaku into a Zaku to Kai, a Zaku ground type into a Gif, a Gif into a Gif custom, the Dom becomes a Dom Tropen, the Zagak gets an E suffix, turning it into a Zagak E, the vanilla Gelgoog becomes a Gelgoog Marine, with the GM going up to GM Command, which in turn can be converted into a GM Custom using the same part. Then there's the Ground Warfare Kit, which is pretty much there just so that you can make a Zaku into a JTAP in order to access the aforementioned Guff and Guff Custom routes. You get to the clearance parts around the later end of early game. These have 7 combinations in total, allowing you to upgrade an Absolus 2 into an Absolus 3, a GM Custom becomes a GM 2, Zaku 2 Kai gets turned into a High Zack, a Dom gets a big sword with its Dom Gross Bale variant, the Big Row ascends to Crab, i.e. Val Lalo, the Magnetic Coding Gundam becomes Alex, and the GPO-1 gets turned into Gundam Mark II. It is worth noting that the enemies, like the Death Army, can be scrapped directly into clearance parts. If the game lets you disassemble a Taurus, a flat maybe some Gaza Seas, you'll get the variable frame. Just like the Ground Warfare Kit, this one has a single combination, which lets you pretzel twist a Rick Diaz into a Mephis. Now, a movable frame is something you can probably get around early mid-game. This one lets you upgrade a Mephis into a Hyaku Shiki, a Zaku 2 Kai into a Zaku 3, a GM2 into the GM3, the Dom becomes a Dryson, Triblades and all, the Heizeg gets turned into a Barzam, and the magnetic coating version of everyone's favorite mechanical pensioner becomes a GPO-1 in its full 1990s glory. A little bit after that, the game should start doling out upgrade parts. You get four combinations which go as follows. The GM3 becomes a mint green Jagan, the Rick DS will ascend into Rick DS S from Gear Beat 2, the Gaza D is turned into Gaza E of Sentinel fame, while the Hyaku Shiki becomes its Zeta MS3 cousin, i.e. the Hyaku Shiki Kai. But we can go higher. The high clearance parts are a slight upgrade over upgrade parts, ironically enough, but here we are. Just like its predecessor, you also get four combinations. Jigen gets turned into a heavy gun, the Gelguk can digivolve into an R Jarja, the Zaku 2 Kai becomes a Giradoga via some dark magic, whereas the Zeta foregoes its transformation as it turns into a Rigazi. Now, there's high grade parts with sport three combinations. They'll turn a Gundam Mark V into a Dovan Wolf, a Noiseal into an Alpha Zero, and the Zaku 3 becomes the Haman Simp Supreme Slime Green Zaku 3 Kai. Now, back to simple parts with very few combinations. Gundam becomes Magnetic Coating Gundam once you put Magnetic Coating on it. Well, no shit, people die when they are killed. While the High Mobility Booster does not let you make speedy variants of Zaku 2 and Gilgug anymore, you still get two routes, which turns the Dom into the Dom Bane Nicts. Not sure whether I spelled it right, I may be a Euro, but I'm not a Krauts, Austrian or a Jerry. That aside, the GPO-1 can also be upgraded. Into Full Burner, that is. If you've ever put the Rick DS into the Shredder, which would be mean, but you gotta get that part somehow, you will get the Gundarium Gamma. This does one thing, it turns the Gaza C into a Gaza D. Another part you can get via this assembly, this time by savagely dismantling a sumo silver type, is the Eye Field. This one lets you turn the Big Row, a green space robot with claws, into the Noiseal, a slightly bigger space robot with slightly cooler claws. The armor unit can be gotten from the store and it lets you turn three units, the Gundam Alex, the Hyakushiki Kai and the Double Zeta, into the Chobam Alex, the full armor Hyakushiki Kai and the full armor Double Zeta, the anime one, not the fast from Sentinel, respectively. 
The Defensor unit is also made available in the store, upgrading the Gundam Mark II into the Super Gundam and turning the Rick DS into a Super DS. You also get the option to buy a back weapon system, slap it on a Rigazi and get the back weapon system variant of it. If you want your GPO 3S to be a little bulkier, the armored base can swiftly turn it into a Dendrobium. Another single upgrade part is the Biosensor, letting you turn the Golden Hyakushiki into a Zeta Gundam. The Psycho Controller is a part with two combination routes, making the Elmef into a Kubala Mark II, the LPO Puru one, and the Gira Doga into a Yag Doga, the Gune Gus one. On the off chance you want that Yag Doga to ascend into a lobster, i.e. the Sazabi, the Psycho Frame is a single upgrade part that does just that. While the game's sniper rifle doesn't let you make a Heisek custom anymore, you still get to turn the Gelgoog into a Gelgoog Jaeger. Going to a more versatile weapon part, the Beam Cannon has three part combinations, turning the GM Custom into a GM Cannon 2, the Kubelay Mark II into a mass production Kubelay, and the Victory Gundam becomes the Victory Dash Gundam. The Easy Akai, a space warfare iteration of Shiro Amada's personal machine, gets the two variants it had in Gatorbeat, by which I mean the Heavy Armed Custom that requires the Salamis Cannon, and the High Mobility Custom, which you can get with the help of a Bektard Booster. I am not kidding. It is literally called that. See? Bakutado Busta. Suffice to say, the addition of a tarred backpack does make it faster in space. Should you want more single shot firepower out of your Hyakushiki, the Mega Bazooka Launcher is very much a thing, letting you make the Hyakushiki Mega Bazooka Launcher variant. Oh yeah, and the Beam Space Yo Yo, the income is here as well. It makes the Psycho Gundam into a Gundam Mark V, while the Zeta becomes the S Gundam. Lastly, the fan funnel allows the Rigazi to become a new Gundam. Hopefully that should cover all of the units that can be obtained this way. If you are not familiar with this part based upgrade system, you should probably open the G Generation Mono Eye Gundams menu guide that I made, since I had touched on it there. With that I'd like to thank you for sticking around, if you want to go like this one, maybe comment and subscribe, and until next time this is Shirtlad, signing out.